Nama Om Vishnu Pataya Krishna Pushtaya Bhutale Shemati Bhakti Vedanta Swam Tinamine Namaste Sarasati Devi Kaunavani Pachaline Nivasusha Sunya Fadi Pashta Chade Satarine Tasri Krishna Jaitanya Prabhu Nitananda Shi Advait Gadadhada Shiva Sari Kaura Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, so welcome everyone who's just joined us. Hare Krishna, Nava Sudamani Radhika, Sahachari Mava. All right, so as I said, we're on chapter 11, continuing, picking up on text 7 today. So... Let me just share the Bhagavad Gita I've got here. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Mother. Hare Krishna. You can see? Yes. Great. Fantastic. Okay, Mother Mangapu, have we done everything? We pressed the record. We said the prayers. We're ready to dive in. Into text the seven. Yeah, text seven. Ihai kashtam jagat krishnam pasyadhyasa chara charam. Mama dehe guda kesha yach chan yad dashtum ichasi. Translation O Arjuna, wherever you wish to see, behold at once in this body of mine. This universal form can show you whatever you, you now desire to see and whatever you may want to see in the future. Everything, moving and non moving, is here, completely in one place. Purport. No one can see the entire universe while sitting in one place. Even the most advanced scientists cannot see what is going on in other parts of the universe. But a devotee like Arjuna can see everything that exists in any part of the universe. Krishna gives him the power to see anything he wants to see, past, present and future. Thus, by the mercy of Krishna, Arjuna is able to see everything. Everything. Sounds familiar. I think we did read this last week, but there's no problem in looking at it again. It's only a small purple. Um, any immediate questions off the bat, as they say? Quite self-explanatory. Self but part also just highlighting Krishna's mystic potency and mystic power that we can by Krishna's grace, we we can see the whole universe. So Arjuna is going to see not just the whole universes, but the whole un of not just the universe, but universes. And as we will see, he's going to see things which are beyond their normal comprehension. So by Krishna's grace, one can Krishna can reveal all. All the planetary systems to someone. Yeah. Just like there's an example just coming to mind now. Do you know the um story that's given in the Chaitanya Charitamrita Majulila, wonderful chapter called The Opulence and Sweetness of Krishna? And there the story is told, illustrating the opulences of Krishna how Lord Brahma went to see Krishna in uh, Dwarka. As I re you think we know that story. And he had to wait before he could go and take darshan of Krishna. So then D Dwarka Krishna's servants came and wanted him to clarify which uh, Lord Brahma he is. So <laughs> according to Lord Brahma's kind of what's the word according to his understanding nothing exists outside of his creation in the universe that he had created so that question was a bit strange to him what do you mean which lord brahma am i so if you think we know then what happened then he goes in to see krishna and then he asks krishna about the question and then krishna reveals Hundreds of thousands of, of, of Lord Brahmas come. All with some with ten heads, some with a million heads. 
how that looks so how that works i've got no idea <laughs> what does that look like is it on one torso there's a hundred there's a million heads but the point i'm bringing out here is that only that only our four-headed brahma he could see all the other brahmas but all the other brahmas couldn't see each other yeah, so Krishna empowered him to see all the Brahmas. Yeah, another example. Yeah, just when uh, again, when the Lord Brahma, after his long austerities in order for creation, then the Lord, then the Lord revealed Vai Vaikuntha to him. But that revelation was of what was within the sky of his heart it wasn't like an external it wasn't manifest for everyone to see only he could specifically see it and it was uh it was an it was in the trance of samadhi that he saw it so in the same way krishna is going to reveal this universal form to arjuna and he's going to see the future as well, which means he's going to see the outcome of the Battle of Kuru, etc. It says here, um, every, well, whatever you may want to see in the future. And he's going to see, the, as we, we read on, he's going to see the destruction of most of the warriors on both sides. You know? So hopefully we might see the whole spiritual world one day. <laughs> Maybe sitting there chanting Japa, and the whole of the spiritual world may be revealed to you. Yeah. Tatashtu. Tatashtu. Yeah, let it be so. I tell you this amazing story, but I, but I try not to, but I won't elaborate on it. I'll just tell you a, a, a part of it. This happened in Hungary. Some of you might have heard me tell this story before. And my Guru Maharaj had given a lecture previously speaking about he was highlighting importance of chanting with attention so he was saying if you're not chanting with attention just i'm just paraphrasing if i remember rightly if you're not chanting with attention then it's like whipping krishna with a stick he was trying to emphasize the need to chant with attention so this Mataji, she was beside herself with grief and anxiety because she couldn't chant always with attention so she was in great like an existential crisis going through her mind and then krishna appeared to her in the temple room and he had just the way she he she described him he had just come from how herding the cows and he still had dust on his hair etc so krishna came and he sat beside her and he, and and he put his arm around her to actually pacify her and she was having ecstatic obviously sattva kabhava tears shivering from this experience but no one else saw it in the temple room krishna just uh, just came to her now consequently um that that touch of krishna that that darshan of krishna mm -hmm. completely purified her and she came to a very advanced level of bhava of ecstatic ecstasy so anyway she goes to my gurumaj to explain all of this what happened and this is revealed and yeah so she so she explains what happened and she can't speak she's just sobbing and crying and she can she can hardly explain to my groomer what actually happened but eventually he eventually she actually tells the story and it's there's and you can tell because she keeps a diary and the days after that then she's obviously in a great ecstasy and i think it was before or just after that 
she was diagnosed as having a terminal cancer. Anyway, I'm going way off the track here. <laughs> I've tried not to. She had a terminal cancer, so she died within a year of that experience. You know, I've gone off the track a bit. But the Molly point Prabhu, was, can, you, Molly Prabhu, can you let uh, three, four people in quick? Oh, sorry, I'm getting carried away telling this story. <laughs> one second. And a point, I'm, one second. Okay. Yeah, so point I'm making that uh, Krishna can appear before someone, someone, and no one else, and other devotees might not know. They, but you might see the ecstatic symptoms on devotee. Anyway, Krishna can reveal himself in the holy name as well. Yeah. I know one devotee, and and I won't say his name. I know one devotee would often be, he isn't with us now, but he used to stay with us in the ashram. And he often used to um, choke up chanting and used to, in the end, he would chant with his back to the devotees. He would chant facing the wall because he was experiencing a lot of ecstasy. So Krishna was revealing himself. No. Anyway, I've gone off the track a bit. <laughs> Hare Krishna, no, welcome. No, this is the right track. This is the right track. Yeah, this is the right yeah. track. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's the right track for us to even meditate on getting somewhere. Yeah, yeah. All right, so yeah, so Arjuna is going to have this, uh, this um, Krishna will reveal his universal form. Yeah. All right, Sri, so read on. Or is there any comments upon that? Yes. All right, let's read text eight. It's quite a lengthy purple, text eight. If anyone would like to read text eight. I would like to, Mundi Prabhu. Go ahead, yeah. Nato mam shakshashi drashtum. Go ahead. Nato mam shakshashi drashtum. Anina vyaswa chakshusha. Divyam datame te takshu. Pasyame yogam aishwaryam. Translation. But you cannot see me with your present eyes. Therefore, I give you divine eyes. Behold my mystic opulence. Purple. A pure devotee does not like to see Krishna in any form except his form with his two hands. A devotee must see his universal form by his grace, not with the mind, but with the spiritual eyes. To see the universal form of Krishna, Arjuna is told, not to change his mind, but his vision. The universal form of Krishna is not very important that it will clear. The universal form of Krishna is not very important that it that will be clear in subsequent verses. Yet because Arjuna wanted to see it, the Lord gives him the particular vision required to see that universal form. Devotees who are correctly situated in a transcendental relationship with Krishna are attracted by loving features, not by godless display of opulences. The playmates of Krishna, the friends of Krishna, and the parents of Krishna never want to, Krishna to show his opulences. They are so immersed in pure love that they do not, know, not even know that Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead. In their loving exchanges, they forget that Krishna is the Supreme Lord. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, it is stated that the boys who play with Krishna are all highly pious souls. And after many, many births, they are able to play with Krishna. Such boys do not know that Krishna is a Supreme Personality of Godhead. They take him as a personal friend. Therefore, Sugadev Goswami recites this verse. It. I learned this verse, but I need to relearn it again. It's a... Here is the Supreme Person who is considered the impersonal Brahman by great stages, the Supreme Personality of Godhead by devotees and a product of material nature by ordinary men. Now these boys who have for many 
have performed many, many pious activities in their past lives are playing with that Supreme Personality of Godhead. Srimad Bhagavatam 10, 12, 11. The fact is that the devotee is not concerned with seeing the Vishwarupa, the universal form, but Arjuna wanted to see it to substantiate Krishna's statement so that in the future, people could understand that Krishna not only theoretically or philosophically presented himself as the Supreme Personality, but actually presented himself as such to Arjuna. Arjuna must confirm this because Arjuna is the beginning of the parampara system. Those who are actually interested in understanding the Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna and who follow in the footsteps of Arjuna should understand that Krishna not only theoretically presented himself as a Supreme, but actually revealed himself as a Supreme. The Lord gave Arjuna the necessary power to see his universal form because he knew that Arjuna did not particularly want to see him as we have already explained. Right. Okay, thank you. Hare Krishna. So any uh, immediate questions here or comments? I like the fact that he came in, he showed so that it's like factually represented. That's it. Tomorrow somebody can't say this is that and all. It's very clear. He's shown it and that's like in, marked in stone for generations to come. Yeah. And yeah. the person can't come and say, you know, I'm God and this is it. Here he showed his person, you know, his universal form and it's it's documented and, you know, so. Yeah. And the con man can't and come and say I'm God. Yeah, um, but some still do. I think we mentioned last week, we mentioned um, there was one um, proclaimed person who was claiming to be God in India. I think he's passed away now. Um, Sai Baba. We mentioned this last week. Whether he thought himself but his followers, anyway, some, some devotees approached him and he said, if you are a manifestation of God, uh, can you show us your universal form? First, so first, yeah, so first he said, first you become my bhakta. <laughs> first you become my devotee. But generally, yeah, this is why the prob yeah, Prabhupada would often, for persons who claim to be God, he would ask them if they could generally, he sometimes would ask, he would ask devotees to question them whether they could lift Govardhan Hill. <laughs> as one Prabhupada would often use. And I mentioned last week as well, I don't think he was perhaps here, Mother Sudamani Radhika, the last class, but also um, the Christians make a, quite a big thing of Jesus supposedly being God. Excuse me, devotees heard this last week, but I just fought with it again. And the evidence they put forward is that he rose from the dead. So compared to this, <laughs> compared to this, the universal form, it doesn't really come up to much. You know, even yogis can do that probably, you know, and there are stories of yogis, you know, what's the big deal? Haridas Thakur went, you know, he feigned death, he went into a deep samadhi, there was no life airs going through his body. So he threw his body into the Ganga. And then later he just manifest life airs again and he came back to life. But yeah, very... So if you meet someone who's claiming to be God, next time you're in the waiting room at the dentist and the person next to you says they're God, you can ask them, please can you reveal your universal form? All right. Anything else from here? This... I will tell them to materialize some ladders. Yeah, materialize, materialize some ladders. But here, I thought myself, I thought this was interesting, this paragraph here. That they're not interested in seeing the universal form. Yeah, because the universal form is quite limited in the amount of emotions as that one can experience upon seeing or experiencing this universal form. And the emotions which you're going to see Arjuna go through, which would be quite a few, from shock, horror, disbelief, guilt, you know, 
they are not very they're, they're not of a sweet nature also i was wondering you know it's more of awe and reverence like mm. it's, it's it's then there's no spontaneity you know i mean i can relate to this mudi prabhu i'm now in the manor i go to the temple every day morning and then i'm with radha londanisha the deities are so close literally literally so close you feel a natural intimacy just being there it's like you know you do dandavat and you're at your lotus feet it's so close and there's a spontaneous intimacy about that radha londanisha temple i cannot yeah, it's a certain dynamic a certain sweetness about it the dashka also yeah gokul and under are quite far away and they're quite up in the air as well and also so much of they look very opulent it looks a lot of you know it's like you feel when you see ramachandra you feel reverence straight away you feel like there's the mariyada purusha standing in front of you you, you feel yeah, he... straight away it's just that mood comes up and and that's the sweetness when you have some you know and and this is just an example so imagine somebody is on the you know myst- mystic opulences with all the hands and legs you will be you will be shocked you won't feel like embracing the lord would you <laughs> yeah and papa says it's very difficult to um dress the universal form <laughs> the garland for the universal form <laughs> it's very difficult how many la- hands and how many legs <laughs> yeah, <that> was... <laughs> very difficult but here so here the, another point here is that the um the emotions of sweetness or say loving exchange for krishna they're much more they're much more kind of relishable and uh, it goes very very deep that there there is no depth to lord sweet to 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 krishna's sweet to his sweetness there's, there's there's no depth to his wonderful sweet pastimes and exchanges of love so it's like the residents of andavan they are immersed as prabhupad says see they they, they they were so immersed in pure love which means they can go deeper in the emotion of love and affection for krishna as a comparison to the emotions and appreciation say of the universal form in that regard it's very shallow so in other words the the residents of vandavan because they're so immersed i think my guru maharaj describes it quite poetically in one place that they because they they delve so deep into the experience and the sweetness of krishna and the loving exchanges that they are unable to swim to the banks of awe and reverence because they're drowned in it they're actually drowned in it so i guess we can materially speaking and it is a limited example but when there is a ex when there is affection for someone this in the beginning days <laughs> say so, early marriage or whatever i think we get the idea then there's yeah they did the, the emotions are very very personal so here in relationship to krishna as prabhupada is highlighting here the actual love and affection that they experience to krishna even if sometimes there is some exhibition of godly qualities that they never see him as he said here as a supreme person because they're so absorbed in his sweetness and it's incre- and it and just increases and increases and increases so that's what any quote says for us sukadev goswami now this verse comes it says 10 12 11 now it is a this is the actual verse comes in a series of verses which describes how the cowher boys would play in vrindavan they would imitate the frogs they would climb in the trees and imitate the monkeys you like that they would imitate the ducks etc they then this verse comes <clears throat> how so sukadev goswami is astonished at the interactions they're having with the supreme personality of godhead yeah well he is 
he is reciting it, okay? He is reciting it, and he has this exclamation of wonder. So he says, Kritta Punya Punja. How many pious activities must they have had to play with the Supreme Lord like the cowherd boys? So he's saying in, in kind of a disbelief, how many, how is it possible? <laughs> they must have unlimited pie in going back hundreds of lifetimes. I always remember just his last three words, Yeah. <clears throat> So keep this in mind as we're going to be hearing about the universal form, and it will be it is full of wonder and it is full of amazing features, but it's not as amazing, as wondrous as Krishna's beauty and his loving exchanges with the gopis and the Kauha boys and um, and the Mavya Soda. These exchanges go much, 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 much more deeper and are a source of great, great different types of ecstatic emotions. Yeah? Vyapacharini, uh, Bhava, there's all these different Bhavas are described, which is described in the nectar of devotion, all these different flavors of ecstasy. And sometimes they give rise to other moods of ecstasy. And it's just like an unlimited ocean of different ecstatic emotions which drown the inhabitants. Of, of a Vrindavan. Yeah. So it kind of doesn't power the Vishwarup into insignificance, but in one sense it does. Yeah. So that's why the devotees, they don't really, they don't aspire to see such a form. Yeah. Any questions or comments about that? Yes. Also, there's in there in the in the verse it says that they are not ordinary souls who are gopas, so they are also pious. And I don't know if it's true that do you, you know in in Rama and Lord Ram goes to the forest to see all the sages, and the sages say, and he says, wait, and then he says, next next yuga you can come. Actually, Ram goes to see them in the forest, and then they tell him that the next life they come as gopas. Yeah. Go peace. Go peace. Oh, go peace. peace. Yeah, they said the Dantakaranya sages. They were chanting the Gopal mantra. That was their sudden. And they was meditating on Gopal. Yeah. So the the Gopal mantra, it, it can be it's a meditation on the uh, mood of the gopis as well. Yeah. So it's a smaran for gopi bhav. Yeah. So they was meditate on that mantra. And then when they saw Ram, who is they know, they saw Ram, but their hearts erupted in affection for Gopal. In them, yeah, it, they, their hearts just became overwhelmed with with uh, remembrance of Gopal in the mood of conjugal love, of feminine attraction. <laughs> Of that bhava because because that was their mantra they was chanting so then they was praying what did they pray for to lord ram that they have association with him with the lord and yeah then, and then the lord will come back again yeah so i will but what they wanted but they wanted association because he only had one wife wasn't it and it was all ram so he said it wasn't possible but so then he filled their desire at the, in the next lives, I think, at a later date. And they became gopis. There's different groups of gopis. Yeah, there's one group of gopis which are the personified Vedas, and they prayed to become gopis. These are the Rishi Chari gopis, they're called Rishi Chari gopis, the ones you mentioned. Yeah, so it just says you're for a bit of information. And I was chanting the Gopal mantra, and they saw Ram, and they felt affection for Gopal. In uh, in Vrindavan, yeah. So could the punya punja. All right. Should we read another verse? Any other comments or questions?
Yes. All right, let's read text nine. It was a few short verse and purples. Anyone like to read text nine? Let's see who's here. I can read. Yeah, go ahead, Mother Gayatri. Text nine. Okay. Sanjay Vacha Eva Muktva Tatorajan Maha Yogeshwaro Hari Sarshayam Asa Parthaya Paramam Rupam Aishwaram. Aishwaram. Translation. Um, Sanjay said, O King, having spoken thus, the Supreme Lord of all mystic power, the personality of Godhead, displayed his universal form to Arjuna. Yeah, it says Rupam Aishvaryam. So Aishvarya Bhav, yeah. <laughs> the word is used here. Aish Aishvaram, universal form. So perhaps you can read just the next verse as well, Mother. 10 yes. and 11. There's a purple there. Okay, so I go back. Okay, if you go back. From Thank you. Anekavatra Nayanam, Anekad Putav Darshanam, Anekadivya Bhara, sorry, Anekadivya Bharanam, Divya Nekodyata Yudham, Divya Malyam Bharatharam, Divya Gandha Nulepanam, Sarvachchatya Mayam Devam Anantam Vishwato Mukham. Sorry, I don't have my glasses. <laughs> Translation. Well, Arjuna saw uh, in that universal form unlimited mouths, unlimited eyes, unlimited wonderful visions. The form was decorated with many celestial ornaments and bore many divine appraised weapons. He wore celestial garlands and garments, and many divine scents were smeared over his body. All was wondrous, brilliant, unlimited, all expanding. Purport. In these two verses, the repeated use of, of word of the word many indicates that there was no limit to the number of hands, mouths, legs, and other manifestations Arjuna was seeing. These manifestations were distributed throughout the universe, but by the grace of the Lord, Arjuna could see them while sitting in one place. That was due to the inconceivable potency of Krishna. Yeah, we mentioned that before. Yeah, he's just sitting in one place and he can see unlimited universes. Yeah. He can see many divine scents. Where we could smell those divine scents. I should imagine you can't see scents, so perhaps you could smell the different scents. <laughs> anyway, try picture this as best as we can within their mind. Uh, trying to, yeah, trying in, trying and envision this. I don't know if those who have access access to. Um, there's a wonderful. I've I have mentioned it before. He wrote it called Horna Chandra. He did this Gita Rita, where he reads this in a dramatic way, and he he also em, embellishes it with different commentaries of the acharyas here and there but he recites it in a um, very dramatic way and it's with all background music and i was just listening to a couple of minutes of it before we opened up today i just had to look if i could find it so it's purna chandra gita Mrita. i was thinking perhaps um as we finish this chapter Perhaps we might just listen to that dramatic reading. Yeah, that'll be nice. Yeah, that. But it takes fourteen minutes, so it takes fourteen minutes of our reading. But it might be nice to. Yes. Huh? Definitely. Yeah, it's because. Uh, any uh, comments or questions here? Then. Well, it's just like uh, well, going to a cinema house. You know, you just go inside and suddenly all these <laughs> different heads and different eyes and everything pops up. It's like, you know, you get scared. It's like a movie. Yeah, you, could say, you could say it's like, uh, what do they call it? 3D cinema. Yes, 3D cinema, yes. 
Well, now Google has this thing where you put on some goggles. No, is it not Google? Apple. And the whole display goes into your, anyway, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but, yeah, so, but this is it without any limits. But it's a good, yeah, we could look at it like that. A massive big screen. Yeah. But here it's, but Arjuna cannot see anything else. I don't think at this point he can see the battlefield anymore. He can just see, whether he can see Krishna, whether he sees Krishna at this point, I think Krishna transforms into the universal form. Yes. Actually, he doesn't. He, he loses sight of Krishna, the uh, yes. two-armed form. And later he will ask Krishna to reveal again that form from which sweetness comes. But yeah, so Arjuna's on the chariot. I think it's going to mention in the next verse about sun. About this is a description given by San by Sanjay to Dhritarashtra because he is seeing it. So he's describing this to Dhritarashtra. Yeah. Yes. But there's some good artistic impressions of this. There's, isn't it? Some of our Iskon devotees of there's a few pictures, good pictures of the universal form as best as they can be. Shows unlimited mouths and anyway, I won't because there's parts that said um, soldiers rushing into Krishna's mouths with their heads smashed against his teeth, <laughs> like that. So anyway, so Arjuna is seeing this. So he's in one place, and I gave the example earlier how Brahma saw Vaikuntha just by sit just with he could see it. The whole of Vaikuntha was revealed to him. He was situated in one place, but within his within the within the sky of his heart, he could see this. But this is different, I think. This is actually Arjuna seeing it. He's seeing it externally manifest. Yeah. All right, let's um someone like to read text uh, twelve. Perhaps everyone's got stunned by um the universal form. <laughs> All right, let me have a read. Divi Surya Sahasrasha Bavet Yu Yuga Bavet Yuga Patat Uttitaha. Yadi pa sat prishi shat shat pasastasya mahatmanaha. If hundreds of thousands of suns were to rise at once into the sky, their radiance might resemble the effulgence of the Supreme Person in that universal form. Yeah. Who's a, a famous scientist who quoted? Bhagavad Gita, 11th chapter. Einstein. Who? Einstein. Einstein, I think he referred to it, but I'm thinking of another scientist when he saw the results of his quest or his science, then he saw it. it's just like the universal form. Oppenheimer. Anyone heard of Oppenheimer? Is it not a musician, Oppenheimer? No. <laughs> he didn't invent him. No, he didn't play music. He's the one that we're blessed to have the nuclear bomb. <laughs> He's the one that blessed the earth with the invention of the nuclear bomb. Uh, I, I kind of, yes, yes. But actually, that was not his intention. He started off with a good purpose, then eventually they sort of... Uh, and then he regretted it at the end. He yeah. regretted yeah, he... so much after the thing. I, I, I think I came across his biography somewhere or something. I can't remember if. But he really regretted it after that. Yeah, there was a film about him. Uh, yeah. There was a film. It was everywhere. Oppenheimer. Yeah, he actually learned. He was so interested. He was interested in the Vedas. Hmm. And he learned Sanskrit. Just so he could read Bhagavad Gita. Yeah. Pretty, uh, pretty good. Yeah, and he started different um, movements after that, different in 
in order to balance the building of nuclear weapons in order to um, limit it considering the destruction it causes of course that has gone out the window now <laughs> now there's millions of the things but anyway he saw that and he was quoting the Bhagavad Gita yeah a thousand suns rising in the sky at once but did we read the purple no oh yeah, it was me who's reading isn't it okay when Arjuna, what Arjuna saw was indescribable. Yet Sanjay is trying to give a mental picture of that great revelation to Dhritarashtra. So it's a blind king. Neither Sanjay nor Dhritarashtra were present. But Sanjay, by the grace of Yas, could see whatever happened. Thus he now compares, so he now compares the situation as far as can be understood to an imaginable phenomenon, thousands of suns. Okay, I'm going to read one more, if that's okay. Taitrakashatam jakrishnam pavi bhaktam anekata apasyateva devasya sharire pandavastata. At that time, Arjuna could see the universal form of the Lord. The unlimited expansions of the universe situated in one place, so divided into many, many thousands. The word tatra is very significant. There, um, it indicates that both Arjuna and Krishna were sitting on the chariot when Arjuna saw the universal form. I was on the battlefield, could not see this, this, this form, because Krishna gave the vision only to Arjuna. Arjuna could see in the body of Krishna many thousands of planets. As we learn from Vedic scriptures, there are many universes and many planets. Some of them are made of earth, some are made of gold, some are made of jewels, some are very great, some are not so great, etc. Sitting on his chariot, Arjuna could see all these, but no one could understand what was going on between Arjuna and Krishna. Okay, so there's planets made of gold, there's planets made of jewels. Okay, so Arjuna can see all of this. Does anyone know if, if the demigods could see this universal form? Maybe they are not even aware about it. No, I, I wasn't that Sanjaya could see it. I uh, but Sanjaya could see it. I, I'm not sure of the demigod. Yeah, oh, let's the see. was uh, watching from the tree, wasn't he? He was the son hmm? of Bhishma Gatokic. Oh, okay, I didn't I think know that. He was watching from a tree. Who was watching? I didn't hear that again, Gayatri. Bhima's son, Gatokic, with, oh. uh, with the Hidimba, I think was his name. I think he was watching from a tree. Somebody else was watching from a tree. Okay, I never knew that. He was, so he was blessed with that vision. Sanjay, I could see it, I think. Yes, well, we said here, that's what it said in, this, in, in, in the last purple, that Sanjay could see. So he's, recite, he's, recite, he's relating what he can see to the blind king, Dhritarashtra. But here it says, but no one on the battlefield could, no, no. could, could but, see. It's a good question you asked, Murli Prabhu. Did the demigods, could, could they see? Yeah, the reason I'm asking, because I've had discussion on this before, and I cannot recall the conclusion. Um, I think, as we will read on in this chapter, I think the demigods call for peace when they're seeing, because I think some of them can see, and it's too much for them as well. Let's, I think that's the case. So they could see. Okay, they could see. Yeah, well, we'll, let, we'll confirm that as we read for the purples. But last week we mentioned there was a partial universal form that was shown to Duryodhan, wasn't it? When he, in his madness of illusion, then he tried to capture Krishna when Krishna came on a peace mission just before the battle. What about the sages? Could they see? But this universal form here? Yeah. 
Um, I don't know. Um, perhaps I can look up and do some. Yeah, we can find out. But at least on the battlefield, no one can see. Only um, Arjuna can see it and Krishna. But there's another universal. Um, can anyone think of an other place where Krishna reveals the universe, the uh, universe is? Mother, where Mother Yashoda, when he opened the mouth. Yeah, that's it. And she could see herself within his mouth, who was looking into Krishna's mouth. And she became overwhelmed with a sense of awe and reverence. Not to Krishna as such. She she just became very, very philosophical <laughs> when she saw that. And she began to consider, who, who am I? I am an illusion because I think I'm Krishna's mother. And who is Krishna? Who is my son? <laughs> and she begins to become very thoughtful and very philosophical. You know, she becomes like a sage yogi who said this realization about the temporary nature of the material universes and then krishna's not very keen on that so he manifests his yoga maya <laughs> she becomes overwhelmed with his sweet smiling face and, and and she forgets the whole thing in an instant it doesn't make anything of it she's so overwhelmed by krishna that's another place um If anyone could think of any other manifestations of Krishna's universal form. I'm Googling and it says Lord Hanuman could hear the Gita because he was on the flag. Sanjaya and Barbarik, who was the son of Gatotkaj, so grandson of Bhishma. So I'll look into how he could hear that. But I'll let you yeah. keep your opinion. I think Hanuman couldn't see it. He was just he he's uh the, the flag, he was roaring. He, uh -huh, but he, could hear it. he could hear it. He could so say again. He could. He could hear the Gita being spoken. Oh, he could hear the Gita being spoken because it was on the flag. Okay, yeah. so he's hearing about the universal form. Yeah, and, and uh, we're hearing about it as well by the grace of Sanjay, <laughs> by the grace of yesterday. We are also hearing about it. All right, someone like to read text fourteen. This is where Arjuna is going to start manifesting different emotions now. And at some point he will offer prayers. Uh, Mother Chandravati, you like to read this? I can, but close your ears. Text 14. Tatasa Vishmaya Avisho Hitta Roma Dananjaya. Translation. Then bewildered and astonished, his hair standing on end, Arjun bowed his head to offer obeisance and with folded head and began to pray to the Supreme Lord. Quote, Once the divine vision is revealed, the relationship between Krishna and Arjun changes immediately. Before Krishna and Arjuna had a relationship based on friendship, but here, after the revelation, Arjuna is offered a. Uh, but here, after the revelation, Arjuna is offering obeisances with great respect, and with folded hands, he is praying to Krishna. He is praising the universal form. Thus, Arjuna's relationship becomes one of the wonder rather than friendship. Great devotees see Krishna as a reservoir of all relationships. In the scriptures, there are 12 basic kinds of relationships mentioned, and all of them are present in Krishna. It is said that he is the ocean of all the relationships exchanged between two living entities, between the gods, or between the Supreme Lord and his devotee. Here, Arjun was inspired by by the relationship of wonder. And in that wonder, although he was by nature very sober, calm and quiet, he became ecstatic. His hair stood up and he began to offer his obeisances unto the Supreme Lord with folded hands. 
He was not, of course, afraid. He was affected by the wonders of the Supreme Lord. The immediate context is wonder. His natural loving friendship was overwhelmed by wonder. And thus he reacted in this way. Mm. So it's full of wonder. <clears throat> wonder. And here we have, I don't know how many times I've read this chapter, but first time I've kind of noticed this as a description of Arjuna's character. So his nature was sober, calm, and quiet. You know, he, in a crowd, he'd be quiet. He's sober, we can understand. He's very calm and quiet. Interesting. For such a chivalrous warrior, his actual nature is very quiet and calm. Now he's, now he's as the Prabhupada says, his mood has changed now. So he's going to be offering wonderful prayers now. He begins to pray. So, yeah, he's, so he's not afraid. Let's say he's afraid at this point. No. No, but at some point he will become afraid. It says he was not, of course, afraid. Yeah, at some point as it unfolds, he becomes, a, he, he kind of forgets who, he begins to forget who he is. He begins to lose context of reality. It's just so overwhelming for him. So he he offers, he offers really sincere, intense prayers to Krishna. Like it's too much. Okay, Krishna, okay, turn it off. <laughs> That's enough. Yeah. But okay, any other points you want to bring out here? Uh, Morley Prabhu, uh, Please, yes. in, in one of the classes I heard that when the actual battle was going on, Arjun yeah, yeah. would Arjun would kick Krishna on the right to go right and on yeah. on on his, on his shoulder. Is that true? Yeah, I mean, I've heard that. I mean, that's that's how because the charioteer, because the person on the chariot, he will be armed with bow and arrow. He will be yeah. used for that. So the only way to direct the charioteer. So I've heard. I've also heard that will be to touch him with his foot on the left or right hand side. Yeah. <laughs> so but it's just because he knows that Krishna is God, so would he, how would he have done it? <laughs> that's my Well, that's the, it's uh, interesting you bring that bring that out as a question because upon seeing the universal form, Arjuna will remember those these ex these exchanges of familiarity that, that he's had with Krishna. Yeah. And begins to apologize for it. Like, okay. because technically speaking, Krishna comes from the Yadus and Arjuna comes from the Kauravas. And the ones who are the rulers of the earth are the Kauravas. So the Yadus, from one perspective, are of a lowest status. So Arjuna, in joking with Krishna, would kind of joke with him about that. Oh, you're just a Yadu. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Korova. They would they they would lie down together and Krishna would kind of and and Arjuna would pull fun on Krishna for just being a Yadu. <laughs> so yeah. that will come out. That will come out. And he, and he apologizes for being so familiar with uh with a Krishna. So but in essence, another answer is that yeah, he's covered by his yoga my potency. So don't forget. Um, so he's acts in a very familiar, friendly way with Arjuna, uh, with uh, Krishna, excuse me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Same, you can be saying, you know, if uh, if a Krishna's God, then why does Mavya Soda try to bind him? Yeah. Why does she chastise him if he's God? <laughs> yeah. These devotees are covered by Choga Maya. But yeah, okay. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. All right. So, yeah, so he's become ecstatic. His hair is standing on end. Let's see this. Roma Danya Jaya. Roma Hrishta Roma. His bodily hair is standing on end due to his great ecstasy. Okay, so he's in great ecstasy. At this point, an ecstasy of wonder. 
All right, let's read on. Got a few minutes left. Um, someone like to read text 15? Prabhu, you're not reading the thing. Last 15 minutes you said you were going to read the Bhagavad oh, No, well, it's nearly seven. Um, what we do is we can do it as we're getting to the end of the chapter, I said. Oh, okay. Then we can play it. Do you mean play that dramatic narration? Okay. Yeah, we, sh we should do that at the end of the chapter. Because it... Okay. So 11.15. Okay, and anyone like to read? All right, so I can jump in again, quick. Arjuna Vacha, different meter now. Oh, what's it? Pashami Devam Tav. Pashami Devam Stava Deva Dehe Shavam Tata Bhuta Vishesha Shangam. Pramanam Isham Kamala Shanastam. Vishims Chashavam Udkamams Chadivyam. So these are wonderful prayers by Arjuna. Arjuna said, My dear Lord Krishna, I see assembled in your body all the demigods and various living entities. I see Brahma sitting on a lotus flower, as well as Lord Shiva and all the sages and divine serpents. Purple. Arjuna sees everything in the universe. Therefore, he sees Brahma who is the first creature in the universe and the celestial serpent upon which the Garbhadakshaya Vishnu lies. So Sheshanaga, divine serpents. In the lower regions of the universe, okay, this snake is called Vasuki. Yeah, Vasuki. There are also other snakes known as Vasuki, known as Vasuki. Arjuna can see from the Garbhadakshaya Vishnu up to the topmost part of the universe on the lotus flower planet where Brahma, the first creature of the universe, resides. That means that from the beginning to the end, everything could be seen by Arjuna, who was sitting in one place on his chariot. This was possible by the grace of the Supreme Lord Krishna. I'm thinking perhaps what we can do is tomorrow we can start with this um, dramatic reading. Yeah, kind of we can enter into it a bit more deeper. We can try. Is that all right? We try tomorrow we can start. We can listen to this dramatic reading of this. Okay, Hare Krishna. So, um, any final question or comment here? Any divine serpents? Yeah. In the lower regions, there's the serpents in the isn't the subterranean heavenly planets where there's no sunlight. It's described in the Bhagavatam, but their heads have a jewel on by which the whole place is illuminated. So they have human-like intelligence. It's quite, I've never understood exactly. Just like um, Kalia, you know, the wise of Kalia? Yeah, they're very intelligent, no? When they recite the verses, they think, my God. Very yeah. So, but they have, they have these uh, bodies like serpents. Human body, half, half. That's what it is, is it? That's why I'm asking. Yeah, it's half. Half, half. Okay, All right. So that first half is human, and the second half is, is snake. All so right. like a mermaid. Humanoid, humanoid type. <laughs> half, half. A bit like a mermaid. Um, of a, a goat, you just said a mermaid. I mean, it's fish, isn't it? This snake is a snake man. <laughs> yeah. It's you know, so as we know, um, Krishna has a half man and a half lion form. Yeah. It's good. I mean, sometimes um, I've met a couple of, um, this is a point that uh, Muslims will often challenge, will try and, and intimidate Hindus or people who believe, you know, who believe in the Vedas. They will say, so, you know, so so uh, you believe in, 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 in you believe in a, 
what is it you formed that was Ganesh half man and half elephant and they and they make a mockery of it they try and they make a mockery but in one sense that that kind of argument is a bit like the mentality of a atheist so things that are beyond their comprehension then we just don't believe it because because it's beyond their grasp or beyond their knowledge or beyond their comprehension so therefore we just presume it cannot be true so that's called atheistic mentality you know so if you do if you do happen to have a quote unquote friendly conversation with a you know if you happen to meet someone at work as a muslim and they may bring up these things to you as a challenge i say that because if you meet a particular type of Muslim on the street who's actually can be quite, you know, they're just looking to argue and intimidate you, then you don't bother speaking to them. But if you meet someone and you have a relationship with them and you're comparing notes on your different... Like the other day I went into Boots and there was a Hindu lady and a Muslim lady working behind the counter. counter, And they was having a good rabbit about their religions. <laughs> nice. They was having friendly. They was friends. And I was discussing. One had a, you know, one had a head covered, and one was a Hindu lady. And I had to kind of cough to get their attention. <laughs> but so you can bring this up if they do put that. They start to mock you. They start to mock. Yeah, you believe in? Do you really believe in a half elephant, half man? You, and you really worship? You, you really put cow? You know, you really put cow manure in your house? And anyway, like that. I'm going off the point a bit, but here you can say, but the persons who they have no, you know, just like atheists. So it's an atheistic argument to presume that it doesn't exist because you cannot conceive of it or you cannot see it. But here in Avedas, it gives detailed description of different universes throughout the planetary systems. And so all the myths like centaurs and pegasus, they all come from Vedas anyways, you know, more Yeah. About then you have to, yeah. All of all of their religions actually come from the Vedas. That is the mother yeah. of yes. Yeah, if you study the Vedas in detail, you're going to recognize it manifest all over in all different spiritual traditions. All right, so let's pause there today, and we're we'll start off tomorrow. Fourteen minutes. Hope that's okay. We'll just listen to this uh, dramatic reading of the universal form. Because I'm thinking normally at the end of each chapter, then we read that um, by um, Carla Kanta, that poem about the whole chapter as well. So that we'll, we'll read that at the end of the chapter. So tomorrow we'll hear the, hear the dramatic reading. Okay, so thank you everyone for joining us. And let's uh, continue this exciting reading of the manifestation of the universal form tomorrow with 11.16. Okay, so... Thank you. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna. Thank you, Prabhu.